Welcome to Packet Tracer Activity 10.6.2.2. In Packet Tracer, we can configure a Cisco router via the config tab or the CLI tab. However, in the real world, when a new router is unpackaged, we generally configure it via the console port. Okay. We'll take a look at a console port. I'll do a little zoom in. We see that the console port looks exactly like the Ethernet port. However, the cable that we use to connect to the console port has a different pin layout than Ethernet uh, cables. So you should never connect an Ethernet cable to a console port, and you should never connect a console cable to an Ethernet port. And again, uh, in the real world, you will not have a config tab, and you will not have a CLI tab. You will access the router via console port, and you'll need a terminal emulator to have access to CLI. Okay. And CLI is basically a text-based interface. It's not GUI, it's text-based. Okay. Okay. On to page two of the instructions. Okay. We need to connect a console cable to the console port on the router. Okay, let's select the console cable. Okay. No, we can't connect it to, we shouldn't connect it to Fast Ethernet 00, zero although it will fit. However, the appropriate port is the console port. And the other end of the cable goes not to Fast Ethernet, but to the serial port on the PC, which is RS-232. Uh, need to ensure that the devices are powered on. All right, at this point we should have 100%. All right, we'll page four. Okay, task two, step one, start the PT terminal. So we go to uh, PC zero. Click the terminal. And we need to use the variables listed, the 600 bits per second, okay, the data bits, 8, parity, none, stop bits, 1, flow control, none. We click OK, and we have a CLI access. Yes, CLI access. Okay. Windows XP has a terminal emulator. It's uh, known as Hyper Terminal. And uh, my particular PC has a serial connection to a Catalyst 90, well, 1900 series switch. It's a dinosaur. And I'll make a console connection so I can access the CLI. At this point, you can basically type any type of character or characters, but uh, some, something is definitely required in the text box.
and my PC is configured to use COM1. Click OK. And this looks very similar to what we saw in Packet Tracer. Okay, we set the uh, bits per second to 9600, data bits 8, parity none, stop bits 1, flow control none. This is pretty much standard for uh, Cisco devices. I'll click OK. Okay, and we didn't get anything because uh, the switch is unplugged, so just bear with me. All right, now that the switch is in powered on, we get some uh, PLI output. And the output has been uh, generated to the uh, terminal emulator. Okay. All right. Uh, I mentioned that HyperTerminal is software that's prepackaged with Windows XP. However, Windows Vista and Windows 7 don't have a terminal emulator. So in the classroom, we use uh, PuTTY. PuTTY is an open source, rather small file. It doesn't require installation or attachment to the registry. And this is PuTTY. Okay, to make the uh, serial connection, I select the serial radio. COM1 is correct. Bits per second, 9600, that's correct. All right, to take a peek at the other variables in PuTTY, we just click the uh, serial link. We'll see, yeah, we're using COM1. The speed is 9600. Data bits, 8. Stop bits, 1. Parity, none. And flow control, none. Let's click open. Okay. All right, we got the error message because I had HyperTerminal open and it was occupying the uh, COM1 port. So I closed HyperTerminal. Now I'll go ahead and uh, open PuTTY again. All right, again, we select the serial radio. We're using COM1 9600. And, we'll, and to verify the other variables, we'll select the uh, serial link. COM1 9600, speed, data beat, bits 8, stop bits 1, parity none, flow control none. And select the open. We don't see any uh, CLI output just because I have not uh, sent a data request. Basically, I haven't pressed the uh, enter key. Okay. After pressing the enter key, we get some CLI output. All right. Okay, we've looked at uh, PuTTY, HyperTerminal, and uh, console connectivity within Packet Tracer.